Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, Dr. Sonny Charles, because today is the 19th of March 2020, so yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Thursday's uh, morning's uh, recording, uh, where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff, uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute an investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, guys, so as I said, welcome to this recording. Um, so as, as I've mentioned previously, um, for now, these are the measures that we have to take and we have, unfortunately, we have to, uh, I have to do this video in recorded version. So um, as I do not have the capabilities to run it live. So, um, but of course that will change uh, once uh, the whole situation with the coronavirus kind of uh, eases off a little bit. So uh, for now, yep, if you if you can be patient with me, guys, thank you very much for sticking around. So yep, um, uh, like I said, we'll resume uh, f later. We'll resume the live sessions as well. So um, as always, before we um, jump in, a uh, quick mentioning of our JD, JD YouTube channel to which you can always uh, subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos and of course our JD Bank website and specifically our JD research page which we update on a daily basis. So yeah, feel free to guys to visit us here on jdbank.com and click on the research tab right there. Now, Let's jump into the charts. Now, the first one I want to touch on here is the German DAX. Now, I looked at this one yesterday, and what I was telling you guys to basically keep an, keep your eyes on this uh, little steep downside resistance line. Now, that's from the technical side, of course. Um, looking at this daily chart, you can see the steep downside resistance line taken from the high of the 5th of March uh, continues to hold, continues to keep... Uh, the uh, the price down. If we look at the cash index right now, we can see that the price is currently balancing around the 8,324 zone. So basically, it's not around around here. And this is exact. And this is what I was talking about yesterday. In order to for us to get comfortable with further declines, we need to see a nice, good, strong break here below the uh, 8,255 zone. Initially, of course, the 8,355, and uh, we already have that. But but in just for that extra confirmation, a drop below the uh, lowest point, the current lowest point of this week, uh, below the 8,255 uh, 8, could do the trick here for more sellers. And uh, then, yes, we could consider further declines and uh, we could start aiming for the uh, the lowest point, the lowest point of August here, 2013. And that's roughly around the 8,094 zone. Um, of course, if that's not enough, if the index continues to slide, we will then target the uh, the lowest point of um, the lowest point of June 2013, and that's roughly around the 7,656 level. But again, for now, let's keep your eyes on this, uh, the lowest point of August 2013, and that's the uh, 8,094 zone. Now, in terms of the upside, of course, uh, it's pretty straightforward. We need to see a break of this uh, downside line here, um, and <clears throat> excuse me. Ideally, also maybe a push above this this high here, the high of when, uh, Tuesday, uh, which is around uh, roughly around the 9,141 9, zone. So this way, uh, if we get a break of the steeper uh, downside line and a push above the high of the March 17th. Uh, then yes, uh, we could aim for a bit of a larger correction because as you can see, we're still also below another downside line taken from the high of the 20th of February and uh, in a way, this is where the index could get a hold up. So for now, guys, wait for that confirmation break again. Um, the FTSE 100. Now, um, it closed yesterday in the negative territory. It did try to overcome the steep downside line. It did so, but um, quickly kind of drifted back down below it. So in a way, we actually can get rid of this. This is already had, this has been already violated. So we can get rid of that line and now mainly focus on this one, which is taken from the high of the 24th of February. And um, in a way, um, looking at the cash index right now, uh, we can see that the price is currently balancing just slightly above the 
the the psychological 5000 zone um, and it's basically running around the 5000 1020 territory so um, below the yesterday's closed um, but still yes above some of these key support levels so how we're going to play this one out given that it's already quite uh, overextended here to the downside um, then well we'll be very careful of course we will continue uh, being bearish uh, but probably in this case right now we would like to see a drop below this little territory right here around the 4869 zone which is not far from the uh, the low of of, uh, of this week the current low of this week um, but this uh, 4000 869 territory and let me just show you what that is um, for this one I need to scroll back here well uh, into here um, so the lowest point of September uh, the lowest point of September 2011 so the um, <clears throat> nice good drop below that could in a way lead towards uh, further declines we do have the lowest point of 2011 in general here which is around the 4791 zone which could get tested as well but again currently the uh, the price is balancing around the f uh, 5020 territory so Let's keep an eye on that one. Uh, but again, if it starts dropping below this 4869 zone, then well, this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and further declines could be possible. So keep your eyes on that one, guys. Now then, um, Brent Oil. So, um, well, finally, finally, we managed to drop below the the lowest point of 2016, and this is what I was talking about. This is what I kept talking about, and uh, basically, given that we don't really have much data here, um, oh, that was on WTI. On Brent Oil, is fine, so we can actually start targeting some of these levels. There we go. Fantastic. So. Um, so Brent Oil uh, dropped below the two, the lowest point of 2015, no 16, um, and that was roughly around the 27.13. So currently it's cur it's balancing around the 25 territory, uh, but um, as you can see here, uh, we can what we can do here is we can start targeting some of these levels here, like the lowest point of of uh, April 2003, um, and that's roughly around the 23. 23.05 mark so again uh, for now guys be very careful be very cautious um, yes we have uh, drifted below this level below this key support zone at uh, which is the lowest point of Jan uh, lowest point of 2016 uh, and that's around the 27.13 zone now what you could do here as well is keep your eyes on the monthly chart because if the monthly candle here stays above suddenly let's say uh, this week or next week uh, drifts back uh, above this barrier above the 27.13 zone and if it closes above this now this is where it could become very interesting for the buyers potentially because this in a way could uh, lead to a bit of a correction for now we will only class this as a correction um, and uh, we could maybe capture a bit of a swing here back to the upside now don't get me wrong the overall trend is still to the downside but um, uh, uh, this is what we're looking here for right now we're trying to find this little spot here where um, where we could see uh, some potential um, buying opportunities at least for uh, for a little bit uh, but again if this continues to slide lower and if it drifts all the way here towards that lowest point of 2003 or should I say the lowest point of yeah well actually yes it is the lowest point of 2003 around the uh, 20, 23.05 level. Um, so if it drifts lower to that to that area, if it tests this, um, if it gets a hold up here, then yes, maybe we could uh, consider this potential area as, as a possible maybe uh, area to go along here for a little bit. But um, again, this is at the moment the only thing that you can do is wait. Um, we can all, of course jump into um, a daily chart as well, so we can see if the price starts suddenly reversing back above this 27.13 level earlier. Uh, then yes uh, keep your eyes on this one because maybe we could see a nice push higher ideally of course we would uh, like to see a push above the 31.30 zone uh, and then target the upside but again like I said guys let's see how this is going to play out for now don't get me wrong for now we're more bearish uh, than bullish uh, we are going to be aiming for that 23.05 level uh, we'll see if, if, if the uh, if the commodity can reach that 
that's the lowest point of 2003 um so yeah guys for now for now be very care careful and stay uh, we wait for that confirmation uh reversal sign and then uh yep we could maybe capture a bit of a swing here back to the upside uh silver very quickly on this so found good support around this 11.78 territory i talked about this one recently and uh basically after it fell here on the 16th of march after it fell sharply and tested this level um yes yesterday it did overshoot that a little bit here but nevertheless it still closed the daily candle it still closed the daily candle above this 11.78 zone we can, we can round up a little bit here um so it stayed above this it continues to trade above that level it does overshoot that area but neither of the candles kind of close below this so we'll continue monitoring this all this area because here for now for us of course uh, in order to consider further declines we need to see a nice clear break here through these two levels the 11.79 and the 11.64 zone which is the lowest point the current lowest point of this week and then yes we could consider further declines for now uh, given the steep uh, drop here don't get me wrong uh, if of course we are quite overstretched here to the downside so somebody's probably looking here for a uh, possible maybe correction a little bit and then uh, a drop lower that's quite possible uh, but again, uh, what you could do here right now is, as you can see, the uh, the this is a daily chart, by the way. As you can see, the uh, the the precious metal tested uh, the area around the 12.30 zone today already. So in a way, if you're looking for a bit of a uh, a larger correction here, wait for probably wait for that that break here above. That's for today, guys. Um, wait for a, a break above the 12.30 zone, and then you could aim for maybe slightly higher levels here because um, again at this point you can see that it traveled higher tested the 1230 and now is, is trading around here uh, it's nothing is stopping it from selling off again and drifting lower the only like I said the only issue here is that um, it is uh, it is quite overstretched already but if it starts dropping below the 11.79 and 11.64 territories then well I mean brace yourselves we could see another another lower low here for this week and uh, looking at the monthly chart here guys <clears throat> Um, you can see that we are now uh, near levels uh, which were last tested in, in 2009. So uh, we could continue drifting further south, uh, maybe even towards the lowest point of um, of, of 2008. So yep, um, again the 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 uh, these these are the the previous crisis periods. So I mean yeah, guys, we are uh, the economy is not the economy has been shaken seriously. Um, <clears throat> now then, uh, jumping into US dollar, Singapore dollar, I talked about this uh, pair yesterday. This is one of my favorite gauges for coronavirus. Uh, and uh, you can see that, of course, the situation around the coronavirus is not getting, uh, well, slightly getting better, uh, but not getting better in Europe. Uh, China is, uh, and Korea, South Korea, um, are showing good results um, but um, yeah Europe is still struggling so what I was uh, talking about yesterday was a monthly chart and basically what I was telling you is to keep a close eye on this highest point of uh, 2017 which is roughly around the 45.45 uh, 1.4545 level and as you can see a perfect hit yesterday we had a nice fantastic touch was that yesterday or was it today no that was today guys so this morning we already managed to reach that area so yesterday we didn't quite reach it but this morning yes we did hit that level and as you can see it it acted as a fantastic area of resistance now the big question here is um will this be a point of a, a, a potential reversal here to the downside but again a reversal only as a temporary rever reversal uh like a little correction here back down so that's why um of course we don't get me wrong we do have a lot of space here and we could drift all the way down to test this um this upside line here taken from the low of the 21st of January 2020 but don't get me wrong this line is a very tentative one so for now don't get uh, don't kind of put too much emphasis on it so for now mainly focus on some support and resistance levels if this by any chance starts dropping below the 1.43.24 uh, uh, zone then yep maybe we could see uh, this one drifting lower um, and maybe something is happening good uh, surrounding the the whole coronavirus issues. That's why, um, yep, guys, like I said, this is a very nice gauge 
for uh, what's happening with the coronavirus. Now, um, 1.4545 level, it's um, a push. If a push above that, then yes, of course, this could open the path towards uh, much higher levels. And uh, yep, um, basically not all is good in the uh, the whole field with the coronavirus. Um, USD CAD. Now, um, looking at this picture here. So yesterday I talked about this one uh, and basically initially I was talking about in the morning about this, about the uh, 1.44, a potential test of the 1.4432 uh, zone, but look at the explosion we had here yesterday and uh, it drifted higher, it tested, almost tested our um, main target here uh, that I was talking about, the 1.4690 level and that level was or is the highest point of 2016. So um, <clears throat> we didn't quite reach that. We just fell shy of a few pips from reaching it. And you can see that today we are seeing a bit of a correction here to the downside. Again, don't get me wrong. Um, we, of course, we are looking here for maybe for a bit of a cor uh, correct, a deeper correction. Um, but how you could play this one out here today is basically if we see a drop below this 1.4432 zone, uh, then yes, we may see a bit of a, a deeper extension here to the downside. Um, up until this upside support line taken from the low of the 6th of March, but um, if this reverses, if this area holds, um, we may see a nice reversal and a push back to the upside. The big question here is, can we overcome the uh, the the 2016 high? Now, this is going to be very interesting. Um, of course, this uh, this spike higher, which we saw in 2016, uh, that's of course related to the oil as well, because in 2016, oil depreciated heavily, as we saw, uh, and uh, yep, this is the also that uh, that spike that we had here in oil. So the big question here is, is this a point of reversal for oil and USD CAD or actually will we continue pushing further north? The only way we can play this one out is in terms of the down, uh, the upside, wait for a push above that 1.4690 level because again, uh, we are quite overstretched here um, as some probably are seeing here, some bears are seeing a perfect, a good opportunity to step in. But again, uh, we need some confirmation guys. Um, wait for a drop below this 1.4432 zone and then we could start target some downside. For now, uh, if this area here holds, if it acts as a good area of support, then we may see a rebound and a push back to the upside. So keep your eyes on this one. Uh, GBP USD. So uh, finally finding some support. Um, yesterday, the the pair drifted below uh, the Brexit lows, basically it sold off heavily. And uh, now we're seeing a bit of a recovery here from the um, yesterday found support around the 1.1446 zone. And now today it's trying to recover somewhat but of course, uh, it's a bit of a tricky situation here. Uh, don't get me wrong. Look at this daily chart. I mean, the steep drop here that we had um, from the beginning of this week here. I mean, from the la even last last week, we were still hanging around the 1.30 zone and even 1.31 zone above that. But today or yesterday, is already is it dropped 1.14 to the 1.1450 46 here territory around here um, again. The, the more interesting chart comes here on the monthly on the monthly chart. So you can see we have dropped below the Brexit levels, below the Brexit lows, which are roughly around the 1.1880 uh, uh, here. Uh, again, different charts have different levels here, guys. So double check your your chart. But here I'm looking at trading view and um, uh, or actually do apologize. Wait one moment. Uh, there we go. So the Brexit level was around the 1.1950 zone. So um, now then, uh, the 1950 uh, around around there, because like I said, different charts have uh, slightly, uh, there's a little skew on the number here. But um, nevertheless, it's roughly around there, around the 1.1950. So yesterday, the... Uh, uh, the the pair dropped dropped below that uh, low below this critical 1.1950 level and drifted further south and uh, tested this 1.1450 territory. So um, you can see this these are the levels now where we are trading at. So we are now 
in we have reached levels of 1985 guys i mean this is insane hey, this is what i was talking about yesterday guys and uh, i was looking at uh, gbp usd as well and uh, base i was telling you guys watch out for it because if we get a break here below this below this uh, below the lows of, of brexit uh uh then brexit vote here then yes, we could uh, reach the areas around the uh, one uh, the the areas that were met in 1985. So, looking at this picture, in a way, uh, the question here is, of course, can we go all the way here towards the lowest point of of 1985, which is roughly around the 1.05. Uh, let me just grab grab that one the 1.0520 zone. So can we actually reach that guys? So this is again, like I said, this is going to be the big question. Um, don't get me wrong. If by any chance the monthly candle here comes back and, and closes back above the 1.1950. Now this is where it could become very, very interesting for the buyers. And uh, again, uh, of course, we'll for, for now, we will stay here. We'll, we'll continue targeting the downside. The only thing is that what we're going to do here is we're going to target the downside only if we get an, a break here below the 1.1446 zone because uh, this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and then yep um, lower levels could be met because Again, you, you you probably understand why because we uh, it's we are quite uh, overstretched here to the downside. So maybe a bit of correction could be possible. But if it struggles to get back above this 1.1950 territory, then well, I mean. Uh, well, I mean, we could see another round of selling here, guys. So be very careful with this. Um, AUDUSD, another one that I really wanted to quickly show you. Um, and AUDUSD also drifted to the downside heavily yesterday. Um, and uh, it met support. It found support around the 0 0.5510 territory, roughly around here. Um, the the main level to what we were watching was this one here, around the 0 0.6090 zone. Because if we jump into a monthly chart again uh, that's basically the lowest point of 2008 so we've overcame that 2008 low easily basically and we've drifted to the downside tested the 0 0.5510 territory from which you can see that the pair is now rebounding around uh, 300 pips um, the big question here is can we come back above it I mean if it does come back here and we close a monthly candle here above this territory then well I mean this has been uh, a huge opportunity for those who were buying around here yesterday uh, but again don't try to rush into this guys because in a way as if it continues to trade below the 0 0.60 territory, then, well, we could see another round of selling and we could drift all the way here towards the uh, lows of, of 2002, or let's say the lowest point of August 2002, which is roughly around the 0 0.5231 zone. Again, we have the lowest point of 2001 uh, around here, not far. Uh, let me just quickly capture this one uh, around the 0 0.4778. But again, the big question here is, Actually, can it drift? Uh, can it drift that far? I mean, for now, uh, once again, what we're gonna do here is we once again we're gonna target this this yesterday's low near the 0 0.50. 5510 territory and then yep we'll take it from there if it breaks below this this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and then we're going to start targeting the uh, lowest point of august 20 uh, 2002 um, in terms of the upside as i said we need to see this one reversing back above the 0 0.6009 level um, and we, if it stays above this territory then we, we may go for a bit of a, a larger correction here to the upside but again for now everything's looking quite gloomy Finally, Euro USD. So, for this one, let me just jump into a daily quickly. Um, so yesterday dropped heavily. So um, yesterday I was talking about this area here, uh, the lowest point of October 2019, and uh, yep, uh, or in other words, the lowest point of 2019. It drifted below that. It um, this was initially our target. This is what I was talking about. That if we get a drop below the 1.0949 uh, level, then yes, aim for this 1.0878. But as you can see, it continued to drift lower. It continued to slide and uh, 
basically um, it tested the area around the uh, 1.0802 so roughly around the 1.08 level so it, it got support around there didn't quite uh, drop below the uh, the current low of two, uh, 2020 which is around the 1.0777 um, again for now looking at this picture yes we are seeing a bit of a correction here don't get me wrong uh, it, now we as you can see we already this morning we've managed to test the 1.0949 level again um, and which acted as a fantastic area of resistance so this time it's taking the role of, uh, of, of resistance yesterday was seen as good support but if by any chance we see the rate climbing above this yes we will aim for a bit of a larger correction deal up until this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 9th of March so um, and then if it gets a hold up here, then yes, we could see another round of selling, possibly dr drifting back towards the uh, lowest point of 2019, around the 1.0878. But if that fails again, f yep, further extensions to the downside could be possible. With the upside, uh, 1.1054 zone, that's what we're looking here for, because a nice good pop above this could place the rate above the 200 EMA here on the four hour chart as well. Of course, not, not to mention a break of this downside line, but we will be very careful because we would still be below this uh, up previous upside support line. Where, um, and in a way it could this time act as a resistance and that's why we'll be very careful and cautious around there. Uh, to get a little bit more comfortable with the upside, a push up with the 1.1238 level would be required. For now, uh, we are keeping a close eye on, for today we're keeping a close eye on the 1.0949. If we get a push, a strong push above this and we see a four hour candle closing at least above this then yes we will aim for a bit of a larger ex uh, correction to the upside here up until this downside line which if remains intact could lead to another round of selling guys but for now of course as well keep your eyes on this 1.0949 if it continues to hold this uh, round of selling could come earlier. Okay, guys, I really hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for sticking around and watching until the end. If you want to join me uh, later on at my traders, or should I say, if you want to find my video later on at my traders uh, my traders tea time at around 14, 15, maybe a little bit after that, um, and yes, uh, like I said, it will be uploaded around that time. And uh, yep, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I hope it's useful. So yep, thank you very much and stay safe both in the markets and with your end health wise. Thank you very much guys and bye bye.